April 2020, we began asking people what the main things contributing to their mental health concerns were. Um, and we allowed them to select up to three responses. And among people who were screening with moderate or severe symptoms of anxiety or depression, loneliness and isolation was by far the highest factor. 70% of people said that was one of the factors in their mental health challenges right now. But it makes a lot of sense. The human brain is hardwired for social connection. When we don't have that, and especially when it's taken away from us without our permission, it's so, so hard to maintain mental wellness. Then we had 46% of respondents reporting past trauma as a factor, which might seem unrelated to COVID, but again, it's that those self-care and those coping strategies that kind of went out the window. Um, COVID stress also put us into the same fight or flight response that past traumas would have. So it's common for similar feelings to come up. And then also uncertainty. That's a big factor, a big trigger for trauma response. And this last year was anything but certain, as we all know. Um, and then the other big one was relationship problems. 43% of people said relationship problems were impacting their mental health. Uh, we're spending way more time than usual with people in your household. There's no easy escape to get some space or alone time or to safety if needed. We also saw a big increase in domestic violence rates throughout the pandemic. And then in terms of friendships or relationships outside of the home, when we're not doing well ourselves, when we're anxious, we're lonely, we're irritable, it's really easy for those interpersonal issues to arise. And then I also want to point out children are experiencing this in a very different way than adults. This happened during critical development years, a lot of learning about the world that they kind of missed out on to a large extent. Um, and then thinking about their lifetime, one year is a lot. A third grader has now spent an eighth of their life masked and locked down. That's very different than an adult where this was one, two, three percent of our lifetimes. And then grief, not only losing loved ones, but losing time and routines and just the concept of normalcy, which plays a huge role in well-being. And wait, if you want to include what you've seen through our outreach efforts. Now moving back into re, you know, real life or out of this lockdown, people need resources and supports to help them navigate that. Children are feeling overwhelmed. They're scared. They don't know what to do. Parents don't know how to talk about this with their kids. They're like, how do I even you know, approach this subject and have my kid go back to school if I don't even feel safe you know, walking down the street? So there's so many different factors at play, um, Anna, that are really contributing to the mental health crisis that is facing our country right now.